Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. What is it? Why do you need it? Let's find out. So, in our most recent video on learning Microsoft 365 and Azure AD from the very beginning, we looked at Azure AD Connect and setting up the Azure AD Connect uh, software on a server to synchronize your uh, on-premises Active Directory to uh, Microsoft 365 and Azure AD. That's the uh, more traditional and uh, longer term recognized way of synchronizing those, uh, those two separate directories. But in recent years, there has been a new method, a new kid on the block, shall we say, that has come out of hiding. And that is Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. This is a lightweight version of Azure AD Connect uh, that is very, very simple to install, as I found out, and I'll share with you in a moment. It lacks some of the features that are with uh, the, the fuller um, version of Azure AD Connect, shall we say, but it's off to a really good start, and I think it's uh, going to be a go-to option for many organizations who want that uh, lighter touch, shall we say. So. Let's have a look at where we're up to in our MS-102 study guide next, and then we'll uh, dive right in and set up Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. So as you will know by now, we are working along in our studies by using this study guide for exam MS-102 Microsoft 365 Administrator. Even if you're not taking this exam or planning to take this exam, uh, it's a useful way to follow along in a logical path of learning Microsoft 365. And we've covered a lot in this video series already. We've been right through deploying and managing a Microsoft 365 tenant. We've covered a lot of ground in that section and we're well into implementing and managing identity and access in Azure AD. And in this particular video that we're doing here, we'll be completing this, uh, this first section, which is implementing and managing identity synchronization with Azure AD. We've looked at ID Fix, we've looked at uh, Azure AD Connect, uh, but we've not looked at Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync yet. That's the one that we're looking at today. So once we've covered this one off, we will be ready to move on to another section. We'll be talking all about implementing and managing authentication in our next series of videos. So I look forward to that. But without any further ado, let's dive in. Let's set up Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. So in the previous video, we had Azure AD Connect set up. Now we need to turn that off by running this command, set hyphen msl dersync enabled, enable dersync dollar false. So We've turned that off. Now, in the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, Azure Active Directory, we go to Connect Sync. And we can see, having run that command, Azure AD Connect Sync is no longer in place. It says Sync has never run, although it does leave password hash sync enabled, and it doesn't turn off the uh, seamless single sign-on functionality. Okay, so we're going to Cloud Sync. This is what we want to set up. This is the first time I'll be setting this up actually, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So here we are. To get started, we need to install an agent and create a configuration. Let's open the configuration guide and have a look and see what steps it provides for us. We've got a nice tutorial here to integrate a single forest with a single Azure AD tenant. And we've got some prerequisites that we need to observe. Um, for our on-premises environment and how we can get started. We've got some ports that we need to be mindful of to ensure that agents can make outbound requests to Azure AD if uh, there's a firewall between your servers and Azure AD. So we need to start by installing the Azure AD Connect provisioning agent, uh, and we can do that within the portal. So let's go back to that Cloud Sync tab and go into Agents. And let's click on to download the on-premises agent. And to the right on the flyout panel here, we need to go and accept the terms and download. And there we go. We have our setup.exe. We can open straight into that and get the agent to install. So open that file up. There we go. 
We need to agree to the license terms and conditions and click on install. And here we go, the process is initializing and we are in progress. So let's see what this cloud sync can do. I'm excited to see this actually. It will be a first for me as well. So I am learning uh, as we go. ABL, always be learning. Learn, share, and repeat. Here we go, what have we got? We've got a provisioning agent configuration wizard. Awesome, so what are we gonna have here? We've got uh, Azure AD Cloud Sync to synchronize identities from on-prem to Azure AD. We can have HR-driven provisioning as well, Azure AD to on-premises. Okay, we'll click next, and we've got our two options. So we need to select the extension to enable. We've got two choices, HR-driven provisioning, such as Workday and Success Factors, or uh, as part of that top option as well, Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync, which is the one we want. We also have the ability to do uh, another option, the second one down, which is on-premises application provisioning, which is Azure AD to applications. We'll go for the top one, because this is what we want to do. We want to sync on-prem to uh, Azure AD. We click on Authenticate, and we will select our authenticated Microsoft 365 uh, account here to authenticate to Azure AD with our global administrator account. We sign in, we will make the MFA uh, challenge response and all looks good, excellent. Yes, next we need to configure a service account uh, so we can set up a group managed service account or GMSA to manage the sync to Azure AD. Uh, and in order to create one or use a custom one, we need to enter our domain admin, our domain admin credentials to set this up. So we'll put in the domain admin uh, username in uh, this format, peterrisingm365.com backslash peter.rising. Enter our password. And then we should be able to click on to next. There's a nice link there at the bottom where you can learn more about group managed service accounts as well. If you don't know what they are and how they work. Okay, we're good. Connect Active Directory. This is looking good. We've got our configured domains. Let's click on next to proceed to the next step. Okay, cool. Agent configuration, we just review the settings. Are we happy with those? We've got our AD configuration. We've got our Azure AD configuration. That looks good. We click to confirm and there it goes. It's creating the group managed service account. It's proceeding through. This can take a few minutes uh, and there we go, it's done. Uh, I did skip ahead there on the video and the agent installation is complete. Um, okay, we can click on learn more there if we want to get more information about how you configure uh, a new configuration but we'll go back into the wizard and finish that off and we'll actually go through that process cool stuff indeed right back into the cloud sync option for azure ad uh, connect cloud sync and we want to do now a new configuration now that we've got the agent and which active directory domain would you like to sync so that's the one I want I want Peter rising m365 password hash sync I certainly want that to be enabled uh, that seems to be our only option for this particular methodology so that's fine let's go ahead and create and configuration successfully saved Seems nice and simple. Love it. I'm liking this so far. Okay, so next we are uh, into our uh, scoping filters. Let's have it in the manage section. And here we can change things like the scoping filters and the attribute mapping and do some expression builder type things. So we, what, what we can do here is similar to what we saw in Azure Active Directory Connect and that we can change this to be either all users are going to be synced or selected groups or uh, selected or use and so on and so forth so this just gives you an idea of the sort of changes you can make and you need to put this in with a distinguished name of the object if you're going to manually put some items in there we'll we'll show you what that looks a bit further along 
uh, when we add a user in to be synced. We'll, we'll leave this as all users though and we'll save that and that's absolutely fine. So next in the process, um, we can look at the attribute mapping. We, we can get, uh, and again, similar to Azure AD Connect Sync, this has the ability to select these attributes here that we want to configure for our synchronization. Uh, we can edit those and uh, make the necessary uh, changes uh, for the, things like the mapping type here, for example, and source attributes and default values. And we can tweak these uh, however uh, that we may need or want them to be. So really cool stuff. Um, next, we have the option to test our configuration. And what this does is it's based on provisioning on demand. But we'll come back to that. We'll actually do that step later on. Uh, we can look at what the default properties are. So we can take a look at here what our default properties are going to be set to. We've got password hash sync. Um, we've got uh, prevent accidental deletion. We've got some thresholds in there. We can edit those. We can set up an email notifications recipient um, for one notification to be sent to that recipient in every one hour. So lots of cool stuff in there. Back to the provisioning list. So we're going through this list of, of things quite rapidly here. Um, okay. And now we're ready to go. Step five, enable your configuration. Let's go for it. Let's enable our configuration and get this all going and sorted. Cool. Enable configuration. We'll click on that. And configuration update is in progress. And there we go. Configuration is successfully updated. I did skip there to the end. Uh, just in case you're wondering, that did take a bit longer than that appeared to be. With that done, if we click on Overview now and the Overview uh, tab within there, we can see we've got the configuration status and we have some agents in there, but it's got a yellow triangle on it at the moment. And I suspect that'll turn green uh, in due course. We'll come back to that in a moment. Under Monitoring, we can see things like provisioning logs and auditing logs, and we can see export and import activities and sync activities. We can see our agents in there. We can see that the agent is active in there uh, for our server. And we can get some insights here as well uh, relating to log analytics. But that integration is not enabled just yet. And that's not something we'll cover on this video. Maybe something that I cover on a future video. I just want to purely sync this to Azure AD using the Cloud Sync. So let's go back to Overview. What are our next steps? Agents still showing you. Ah, there we go. Uh, a nice green tick now. And now we can click on see all agents. That did take a little while, by the way. I did pause the video and, and wait about 10 or so minutes before that agent went green. And now in here, we can see our machine name. Um, and that's all good. So this is looking great. We've got some nice green check boxes there. Um, for our configuration status and our one agent that we so far have installed. So let's go into our um, admin center, our M365 admin center, into our active users. You might remember from the last video, we had one synced user, Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy is still there. She was not deleted. She uh, remains as a, as a synced uh, from on-premises user. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Server Manager and I'm going to go into Active Directory Users and Computers and I'm going to create a new user, which will be synced across to Azure AD. So, a little disclaimer, I did create one there called Catherine Janeway there, which you may be able to see, and that did sync on its own in probably about 15 minutes. I kept refreshing and it did appear, but you can force this in the test phase that we saw briefly earlier on. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm creating this user, Tom Paris, and I'm going to trigger that, uh, that on-demand sync um, once I have this user created. So we will show you what that looks like in just a second. So pretty cool stuff. Right, we've got our user created. So now what we need to do is go back to the portal. And here we need to, under the provision on demand section, we need to enter the distinguished name of the user, which is going to be CN equals Tom Paris, comma, CN equals users, CN, uh, comma, DC equals Peter Rising M365, comma, DC equals com. We validate that. It's validating away. It's progressing. And lots of lovely green checks. That is beautiful. We can see that the account enabled is true. We've got 
everything we want to see there. So we did that synchronization on demand there from the provision on demand section. We've successfully imported a user and we click on finish. And now we should be able to go back into uh, active users uh, and give that a refresh. And we should see the wonderful Tom Paris should now appear in our list of active users. And indeed there he is, all good stuff indeed. I like Azure AD Cloud Sync very much. And that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much as ever for all of your support. Please do subscribe, please like and share, and uh, learn, share, and repeat. That's the motto that uh, we have on this channel. I hope you're all enjoying learning along with me. This was a brand new experience for me today. I'd never set up Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync before. It was a real first, and I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, you can find me on various forms of social media. I'm most active on Twitter, where you can find me at M365Rising. So please do connect with me there. Uh, please leave some comments in this YouTube video. I love to hear from you. I love to hear your stories, your experiences with the technology that I'm sharing. Tell me how you found Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync or Azure AD Connect, the more traditional one. Which are you favoring? Which are you using in your organization? What has been your experiences, your... Um, your good points and bad points, shall we say. I'd love to hear. Thanks again. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.